We're going to deal with um, wisdom this morning, a new series, Wisdom. I urge you, I urge you from the bottom of my heart, don't miss anything. I've started just going through it. Um, last night I couldn't sleep and I went just preparing, um, start just looking into what God wants to tell us for next week and the weeks following. And from next week, it's just going to go deeper. And I'm so excited. I can't wait to start preparing for next week. And don't miss anything. Because wisdom is something that you can teach literally every Sunday for the next 10 years and still not scratch the surface. But we will just teach on what God wants us to say. And when the Holy Spirit says, stop the series, we stop it. I pray that you, we literally take in this, this teaching. Amen. Yes. It's also um, the teaching that we did for the whole church. Um, Pastor Brian um, and myself just spoke. We're going to do a, a, I'm not sure now, Pastor B, but um, maybe later today or tomorrow, we're going to do a video session for the teaching that we did with the church, um, also on wisdom in the spirit of swine and in dog and how it can stop us from entering into the fullness of um, the wisdom of God. For those people that were here last week, Saturday, I hope it was a blessing to you guys. I learned a lot and I'm sure that we're going to learn some more. Amen. Let's get into it. What is wisdom? What is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to know how and when to apply knowledge. So what is knowledge? Knowledge comes from the word know. It means that what I've known, what I've learned to know, it speaks of information. That is what knowledge is. Knowledge is what information. Information can either be academically given to you, and I always speak of academics with such a lot of teachers here in the house, but it's either what you receive academically, what you've studied, or what you've learned through skill and experience. That is what knowledge is. Now, wisdom is higher than that because wisdom is the ability that teaches you, that allows you to know how and when to apply knowledge. Let me make an example. People would, have you ever seen someone with lots of skill in something, but without wisdom? They don't know how to apply it. And then sometimes you look at them and you, you're shocked. Like, this guy knows so much, but when you look at his application, there's just no wisdom. So wisdom is not on par with, with, with knowledge. Wisdom is higher than that. Wisdom is an abstract entity, but it has a personality. Are you shocked? Wisdom is a person. Now, don't think of your friend at work whose name is Wisdom. <laughs> wisdom is a person. And as we go into this, Anis, we will see what this wisdom is, what it means. How do I mean it is a person? So wisdom is the ability to know how and when to apply knowledge. Brother Greg, it wouldn't make sense to have all the knowledge but not the wisdom to apply it. Moses had the knowledge, but wisdom needed to come from his father-in-law, Jethro, that said to him, you're burning yourself out. The knowledge that you have is good, but you're not applying it wisely. Get counselors and leaders around you that can take charge of cases that don't need to come to you unless it needs to be escalated. That is what? Wisdom. So the first leadership seminar was done by an African. His name was Jethro. Moses' father-in-law, the first leadership seminar. So when we go to seminars and we pay and we think with that VIP on Zohan's quite near, the first leadership seminar was held somewhere close to Ethiopia and Egypt. what? <laughs> so that is what wisdom is. Wisdom is the ability to contemplate and act using knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense and insight. Common sense. Here it is, common sense. Common sense is common sense. I cannot explain it more. It is sense that's supposed to be common. However, common sense is not always. So wisdom is the one thing that all these things, all these entities, all these traits, it embodies, it gives you the ability to know how to apply. That's why wisdom cannot just be an entity next to knowledge and understanding. Because wisdom overarches it. It allows you and makes you know when to apply it. Can I make an example? Um, Peter was a fisherman. He knew how to cut the fish away. Without wisdom, at a certain point, when he got angry, he took that skill to cut off someone's ear. Is that wise? No. Does he have the knowledge how to step? Yes. Does it make sense? Let me make another example. Wisdom. We sat at the party once. Um, so we sat with this electrician, Brother Mani. We had a wedding. This guy had the knowledge of electricity. But now we're sitting at a wedding. Guys sit, ladies somewhere. What do guys normally speak of? Sport. Whatever. 
This guy in the middle of nowhere came and gave us his knowledge of transformers. In he had the knowledge, but the wisdom went to a place. It was not necessary for him to come with knowledge. So now this guy was telling us how to set up a transformer. Now we're looking at each other like, but my guy, do you get what I'm saying? You may have the knowledge, the skill, but you must have the wisdom to know when to apply it. It is very, it's a very simple explanation in Tate, but as we go deeper, you'll understand that without wisdom, how you build, no matter how skilled you are, no matter how blessed and wealthy or rich you are, without wisdom, it's inevitable for you to build wrong. Wisdom is abstract. So you cannot see, okay, unless it's a person, you cannot see wisdom. I cannot stand here and see wisdom floating over your heads. I cannot, unless the Holy Spirit opens my eyes to actually see wisdom in a person. You cannot see wisdom. It's something that your spirit man captures. It's something your spirit man must be filled with. You cannot see, you cannot buy wisdom. You cannot obtain wisdom by human hands or flesh and blood. Wisdom is abstract, but it has a personality. And I will show you now. Are we together? Let's go to Proverbs 4 verse 7. You're going to have to either record or write notes or go into your books. Apologies, we have a technical issue this morning. Proverbs 4 verse 7. Proverbs 4 verse 7. It says that wisdom is the what? The principal thing. When you see the word principal, what does it mean? It does not mean an important thing. It means the most important thing. It does not say wisdom is a principal thing. It says the. Now, A and the in English, what is it? One is definitive and one is indefinitive. In Afrikaans, what is it? Lid worden. On definitive and definitive. When I say a dog, but me, it means it can be any dog. I'm not defining. It means it's what? Indefinitive. When I say the, it means there is one that is appointed and show this is the dog that bit me. So when it says that wisdom is what? A principal thing, then it means there's many principal things. But this one says that wisdom is the principal thing, meaning it is the most important thing. Before we go anywhere else, wisdom is what? The most important thing. The word principle also means what they call in Greek and Hebrew proton. It means first. It means it is the foundation of all things. All knowledge systems flows from wisdom. Wisdom is what? The principal thing. It is the number one thing. Or not even number one because what can be number one today, what is number one today can be what? Number two tomorrow. It is preeminent, meaning you cannot rank it. There's nothing that can be ranked alongside wisdom. What does it say? Wisdom is a principal thing. No, it is the principal thing. Because as we go deeper into this, Mamsana, we need to know that in scope and in context of this teaching, we need to know that wisdom is the principal thing. Because it does not make sense laying the foundation and then some way we lose, we must lay the foundation of this teaching that wisdom is the principal thing. So what we will aim to do in this is to understand what is wisdom, where do we get wisdom, what do we do with wisdom, and what is the purpose of wisdom. So this whole series, that is what we'll try and explore. So wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. So when Solomon was writing this, Sister Betty, he saw with his spirit eye the world is just focused on getting, getting, arming themselves, getting stuff, filling their lives. It says, Therefore, get what? Wisdom. Wisdom is the most important thing. Therefore, get wisdom. I urge you, get wisdom. In all your what? Getting. Get what? In all your getting, get understanding. Get wisdom. He says, in all your getting, there's nothing wrong with getting in Tate, but when I look at your getting and there's no wisdom, then what is your getting for? Wisdom is the thing that will make sometimes someone that is far younger in, in, in numbers seem way more older than they are because of what? Because of wisdom. Our, our, our grandparents, they didn't have Google. Did you have Google? No, that you are my grandparents. So, come as laws, and Tati kick me clock out. I kick me, and Tati said, I don't even have Google now. So, principle means what? Foundation. It means for all building. Before you build, what do you do? Before the walls come up. You plan and then you build a foundation. It says wisdom for all building in the earth, for all getting, wisdom should be the foundation. Amen. 
Simple example, have you ever seen someone with a lot of riches, a lot of resources, and all these things, and leg wisdom? Those are bang said it. Our family members are doing these things. Our friends are doing these things. Because without wisdom, then you see someone with very limited resources, with wisdom, and it seems like this guy is richer than the other. The only difference is wisdom. It's all in all you're getting, get understanding, meaning that you'll get a lot, my throne. Without wisdom, you'll squander. And I go, kijk, my day van. Get wisdom. Don't get my bank card. Get wisdom. <laughs> get wisdom. Because when we go deeper into where wisdom is, when we go where God walked with wisdom, building things, we'll understand that why wisdom is so important. And how can we then take this abstract thing and apply it in our daily lives? Because the Word of God, without the ability for us to apply it in our daily lives, is a storybook. Say, Father, give me wisdom. Father, give me wisdom. Second Chronicles 7 verse 10. Remember, this is just an intro. Second Chronicles 7 verse 10. Second Chronicles, no, sorry, Second Chronicles chapter 1, verses 7 to 10. Apologies. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verses 7 to 10. I'm reading from the New King James Version. We know that Solomon was one of David's sons. It wasn't he wasn't the only son, but he was the one that God said, You will build the house. He said to David, Because of the blood on your hands, you cannot build my house. Right? When God said, Build my house. It was not just the physical building, but also the people, the understanding, the mindset, Brother Dolphy. So when God, whenever God builds something, it is with the people's state of being, state of mind, also in his mind. So when God said, build my house, it was not just people must go in, but it was also the house must reflect the people. Does it make sense? Right. We will teach this. So when God said to him, because there were other sons that were fighting for the throne, go and read the books of Chronicles, they were fighting for the throne. Which I think some of them felt, my divas of my power, why can't I be the king? David, when David passed away. But God said to David, before he passed away, Solomon is the one that will be the king. Right. So now when David passed away, and Solomon and all this, and they sorted out all these other fake kings and all these um, um, challenges and contenders to the throne. Now Solomon was the rightful one for building the house of God and for leading the people. Check this. On the night that God appeared to Solomon and said to him, ask, what shall I give you? God is literally giving Solomon what? A blank check. I'm so glad I wasn't Solomon in this moment. The year were me. The first thing, year wealth. Check what Solomon said. Solomon said to God, you have shown great mercy to my father David and have made me king in his place. Now, Lord, let your promise to my father be established. What was the promise? That he will build the house of God. He will keep the nation of Israel unified. And he will what? Bless the nation, right? That was the promise. So Solomon was well aware of the promise of God. You have made me king over people that are like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me what? Wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this people of yours? He was saying and mindful that I cannot lead millions of people outside of knowledge and wisdom. He said, for me to be a good leader, I need wisdom and knowledge. Can I show you what the absence and the lack of wisdom does to a nation? South Africa is one of the richest mineral deposits in the world. South Africa, it's like God, Yefro, it's like God was sitting and looking at countries and said, for you I'll put for you. And when he came to South Africa, he said platinum, he said coal, he said gold, he said all these things, he said diamonds. When Solomon looked at the nation, he saw wealth in people. He saw the wealth in skills. He saw the wealth in resources as the bet. And he says, for me to make this thing work, I need wisdom. Dubai. What's not there? Who's been to, to Dubai here? Nimante. Who's been to Durban? <laughs> Transhaven babies. Check this. Dubai was a desert. Dubai was a what? A desert. Do you see that island that was, that was human made that looks like a palm tree? They literally pumped sand into the sea. 
made foundations and built a resort like village. It needed someone to look at what they had. They only had oil and people. Check. They could have said, let's just build a house for myself, for the other princes, and we sell the gold, they become rich. They said, no, man. We've got the resource, which means there's money. So someone with wisdom said, actually, looked at what they had and said, let's turn this little place into the axis, the, the, the nexus where the world turns around. And they started building stuff from dunes. It's not even solid ground. They found a way to build the high-rise buildings in the desert. It takes wisdom. Then you come to South Africa. Let me go this side. Not, not, you are not representing South Africa. <laughs> so what South Africa needed was a custodian with wisdom. They would take these things, Brother Greg, the resources. One of the things I always said was, in 1994, you know, we, we, we did engineering. 1994, what they should have done, this is my, this is what I, they should have come and said, don't close the technical schools. What do we have? Diamonds and gold. Let's teach. Let's invest in these young people. Let's teach them to be diamond cutters. Let's teach them to be goldsmiths. Let's teach them to, to take coal, and some of these coal can be turned into other things. Let's do all these things. Let's train them. For five to ten years, we might not see return of investment. But after a while, you might sit with five, say up to two to five million engineers that will not want to leave South Africa because we don't sell the gold and then buy it back double for what we paid it for. But people saw an opportunity to eat. Lack of wisdom, and now the country looks like one of the poorest with a 30% unemployment rate where we have most of the gold and the resources here. Let me show you in, uh, again. DRC, Congo. There's a metal there. It's only found in, in DRC, Colton. Every cell phone on earth needs that metal. Every cell phone. Every single cell phone. Apple, Samsung, Hisense, Huawei, Alcatel, Nokia, every single cell phone needs that mineral. DRC Congo, what, what do they do? They said, it's either we can train our people, give them land rights, build people on these mines and, and say, okay, we put you here, we put you up, but for everything you made, we take 51% as the government. No, they said, Let's sell all of these rights to outsiders as long as they give us money. And now the, the people that are living on these cold and rich fields, lack of wisdom will turn your people into slaves. So Solomon said and said, wait, let me see what I have. Queen of Sheba and all this Lebanon has all these timbers. What is timbers? It is those rare wood, strong, and we can build stuff with it. Okay, he checked these connections, he made connections, and he said... What do we have? We have people that are willing to serve God. What do I need to advance the kingdom? Then he said, for all this to come together, I need not just knowledge, I need wisdom. So when God asked him why, he said, I need wisdom. Now you see what, why wisdom is such a strong thing that we need. We have a municipality that is struggling to put in two globes. And we were literally walking on gold. We see outsiders coming into the country say, you South Africans are lazy. We will go and stay for two weeks under the ground and we will mine those things. We call them zamazamas. I'm not condoning them. I want to give you an idea. And those guys come out after two weeks. And Tate, you will be shocked. Those guys come out with 30,000, 40,000 after two weeks underground for each of them. Tell me I'm lying. There's a guy from Lesotho that worked for two and a half years. He bought himself a horse of worth 200,000 in Lesotho. Do you get what I'm saying? Lack of wisdom. You put that same mentality into your nation. So Solomon said, Father, give me wisdom. Wisdom will make someone that gets 50% less than your salary seems to be getting three times your salary simply because of wisdom. One of the things you need to be a good custodian, Pastor Jadine, is what? Wisdom. 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 That is the thing. That's why wisdom cannot just be knowledge. There's people that are goldsmiths in South Africa, diamond cutters, but they lack the knowledge. There are people in our communities that can build gates and all these things. And when you go to their houses, there's not even one bar. 
Because they take the gift, and the first thing when they see the money is to what to eat. That is Africa's problem. And then we find here and there, there's nations that are smart. Look, look at Rwanda. Rwanda said, we went through stuff, it was bad, but let's not let this hold us back. Rwanda now is the fastest internet in South Africa, one of the cleanest countries in the world, after the genocide. Why? Because you need a leader that will say, people, we went through stuff, let's cry, let's mourn, let's heal, but let's build. That is wisdom. Botswana, very dry country. They've got diamonds. They don't have a lot of things, but Botswana said, whoever wants to buy build, uh, mines, we might not want to build mines or whatever, but with every diamond you bring out of the ground, 51% goes to the government. Go check. South Africa? And this is not even a politics thing. It's not even a party politics thing. It's much deeper than that. It's a mindset you're from. It's a mindset. Wisdom. So Solomon said, to bring to pass the promises of God, and it was the what did the angel say to Daniel? Since the day you, you what? You set your heart to understand, we've come with an answer. God will not give us strategies and answers until in the palaces that governs the country, there's someone with wisdom. He will not, brother Dolphy, well, we can pray and fast all we blue. Father, oh, wow, yara, oh, and God is looking at us like, guys, just ask for wisdom. I want to give you the answer, but you don't have the capacity to understand. He says, until, he says to the angels, you don't go and give Greg's an answer until he asks for wisdom. You don't need to pray in tongues to be able to manage the things of God. You need wisdom. Solomon didn't say, I need anointing. It was a given. I need to be anointed. He says, but give me wisdom. We are anointed, but we lack wisdom. That's why pastors that go there are just going there for tea. They don't come with strategies. When God brings you into the court of the rulers, listen, you won't always find Nebuchadnezzar was not saved. Pharaoh was not saved, but the person that spoke into his ear heard from God. What saved Joseph? Wisdom. Because he had the gift to hear, but the wisdom to interpret. I saw this vision and God gave me a vision. We don't say it's not a vision. But now, where's the wisdom to interpret? You go to your pastor and he says, Han fast he say, Here, come on, the 21, fast eight. He fast via. There's no wisdom. We need wisdom. Yeah. Father, let me discern. No discernment comes with wisdom. Yes. Do you get what I'm saying? We want to see demons and angels because we want to be religious. Discernment, baby, is where God gives you an answer to a situation that no one else can. And when... The mayor hears of it and he says, this is a problem. Some of them say, I know Dolphy helped us with something. That is what happened with Joseph. Be wise where you are. Don't wait to say, Father, when you make me manage, I'll be wise. No, be wise where you are. He was wise where? In jail. Wisdom is not just one for palaces. Wisdom is forever, wherever you are, Ansana. Wisdom. So now wisdom, now we see wisdom is more than just uh, the Hebrew Greek for wisdom is porkatao. No one's impressed. Ooh, ooh, the pastor is slim. What do you mean? How can I more para ka tau apply in the boardroom? Until we can decode the mind of God. Let's say this is the mind of God. Until we can break it up and use it for daily living. We are religious nuts. I know it's a tough word, but we need wisdom. He said, give me wisdom. He's already been anointed as king. So the anointing wasn't, an, you already anointed. Understanding what made them different, Daniel and his friends. Yes, they were handsome, the Bible says it, but it was not their looks, it was their ability to understand the king. It was, do you get what I'm saying? Because trust me, the word of you, I've, I've given it to you, people will come to you at your school where you teach, the principal will one day come and they're gonna say, Especially with yellow school, Mark, it's a topic for another day. Principal will come. They need answers. How do we discipline kids without beating them and also not lose control of the school? Now, you're just sitting in a boardroom. He was not even speaking to you. And then, because God has given you an idea, you say, let's try this. When it works, it comes back and says, be my counselor. That is wisdom. Oh, Father, if you promote me to HOD, you circle and da, but I You circle da. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm not bashing anybody. I'm saying that the urgency for God is wisdom. The politicians don't have answers. All they do is just, I go in, I campaign, I say, yo, did you see in Tate's jacket? 
Then he says, did you see his broken knee? Yeah, no campaign on. Yo, that party has seen. He can on live. We live on Facebook. Yo, this party of mine, yo. No wisdom. Give me one solution that any politician has made over this past, except saying that I will fix your drains. How many young people do we have in Rainfontein? Why don't anybody go to the, the mines? It says, even if you slash it to 50%, and provide transport, train these young men to be artisans in goldsmiths. Who's done that? Do you get what I'm saying? What, what wisdom is? Wisdom is not just sounding nice. Wisdom is to build. Wisdom is to be to use strategies to bring solutions, tangible solutions. Wisdom is young people cannot get jobs where if someone that is good in IT in church. Speak to women and says, you know what, brother, given here's the key. If you on Saturdays can come to the church or whoever has laptops, we can train these young people. Within three years, three months, four months, these guys can do programming and coding. They can get jobs. We pray for you for a job, yes, but we also give you the skills to walk into the job knowing. Say so wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. He says, now... We're almost done. He says, this is what he says, Solomon. He says, now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. Wisdom and knowledge gives you the ability to be confident as a leader so that you can go in front of people and be able to speak to them knowing that whatever I'm saying, that it will be a strategy that works. And after that, did you hear what his knowledge, his wisdom did? His wisdom brought people to him. He was not looking for connections. Connections came to him. They did what wisdom did because your name goes out. And as much as people talk about your foolishness, and the foolish things we sometimes do, they will talk more about your wisdom. That's it. They will talk more about your wisdom. I ask for wisdom all the time. All the time. Father, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. For you, I can take an etkador. For this, I need wisdom. I need wisdom. May God give us wisdom. When we go deeper into this, Searching the scriptures for wisdom. It is not just to sound nice when you meet your friends from another church. Yeah, we're doing wisdom. You know, wisdom is the one. Blah, blah, blah. That's what we used to do. And then she gives me, and then now, now we wrestling. Theological wrestle. Oh, you know, I think, no, my pastor said wisdom is wise. My pastor said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's nothing wise about that discussion. No one was edified. You were comparing one and each one. But when someone comes to you with an issue in one, two, three, and you can give them an answer, she will always come back. Why? For wisdom. And then you can direct them to God. Why? Wisdom gives solutions. Yeah. Amen? Amen? We're almost done. Are we learning something? Amen. Let's go to Proverbs 8, verse 11, the last verse. Proverbs 8, verse 11. So when Solomon asked this, and I always confess, if God gave me this chance, Jody, the year of it, Anis, ask me anything. The zeros are seen, Kaelin. Solomon said, give me wisdom. Proverbs 8 verse 11 says, for wisdom is better than rubies. And next week we will go deeper into this. Wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. Wisdom is a person. It is not just something you gain through experience. It is a, wisdom is a life. When you study Proverbs, it always speaks of wisdom calling out. Wisdom calling out. Wisdom is a person. No, I worship you, wisdom. No, 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 no. And I will explain in depth why I say it's not just an entity. It is a person. It is something that wants to walk with you, that wants to give you answers, filled with wisdom. And that's why many of you now, you sit here and now you have an understanding of what wisdom is. Now you understand why when there's family issues, they always come to you. Who says so hard? Yes. Come on, you too. Hello, come out of a wisdom of a Zach. Now you'll understand. At work. And it's so easy to fall into that mindset of, of, of bitterness, that mindset of foolishness. Yala mak for me ook naar. 
You can't articulate it. People can't articulate it. There's wisdom that's in you because you fear God and next week we will deal with it. Because the, the beginning of wisdom is what? The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What is beginning means the source where wisdom starts, where it comes from. It is the fear of the God. That's why anybody that don't fear God cannot be wise. They may just know stuff, but wisdom, that's why wisdom is not words. Our grandparents that feared God, they had so much wisdom in them without the extensive vocabulary. Why? Because they feared God. That is wisdom. Thank you so much for watching this with us. I believe this video was a blessing to you as it was for us preparing it and putting it out there for you. Connect with us. The link for our website will be in the description below. Connect with us for any information that you need, for any counseling, for any questions you made, or just to grow with us and to go this journey forward. More info will be on the website, but when you can come back anytime to this page to find out more about what God is saying to us in this season as we're sharing it with you. Thank you so much for watching. Tommy Shita signing out. Be blessed.